Hello everybody, how's it going? Got a few subjects to cover today, but we'll start right here first. Um, so, I need a pure sine wave inverter, and that's what I thought this was supposed to be, but this is the totally wrong inverter I needed for my place. Was it working? Sure it was working. It's a split phase inverter, which means um, 12 volts in, 220 out, 220 volts out, which means um, you can't split off 110 off each leg like you can on your your panel box, you know, because this is 110 and this is 110. But when you put a 220 breaker in like this, it's grabbing power from this side and this side to make it 220. So... That's what this does. This this shuts off both legs. So that's what I thought I was buying way back in the beginning of I don't know what the hell I was doing with the solar system because it's been all piecemeal together and I've been learning as I've been going. You know, I've never dealt with this. but So what I got to get is just a straight old 12-volt um, to 120-volt outlet. And that's all I need. So, in the future, this will probably be going up for sale. Um, the guy said that uh, this is good for running, like, an electric stove or electric water heater or something along those lines. It has to be 220. He says you can't pull 110 off each one. Well, I was misled because that's what I was told, and so I got bullshitted on that. So... That's problem number one, and problem number two is it's not a pure sine wave, what I need. Because the pure sine wave, it matches the harmonics exactly as your regular street voltage. So, yes. So there's that. Um, friend of mine that I was hanging out with today, Dennis, he, uh, he bought this wheelbarrow, as you know, and I've been doing stuff, you know, instead of me buying it, wasting my, my money, I've just been working it off for him. So, you know, I put a, put a hitch on his car, took 75 hours off of it. So this has worked down to 25 hours, and he's got some trailer lights and stuff to fix. So I'll be paying that off pretty soon. And he was with me today when we went to Jimmy John's because he was going to go down to New York Mills and get some, uh, some um, Chinese food. And uh, I think it's Chinese. And I'm like, well, shit, we can knock out. I said, I'm going to be right there. Why don't you just ride along? I said, we'll just go there. We'll go down to Jimmy John's and we'll get my $32 back. And uh, and then we'll swing over to your the place right around the corner. I said, why waste the gas? We're going to the same place. We'll just ride together. So that's what we did. So Jimmy John's, Jimmy John boy, there goes, uh, yeah, he goes, I'll meet you there at 2, you know. So I get there a little, little after 2 because there's road construction I didn't count on. So I had to make a couple longer loops to get over there. So I'm there. And I walk up to the counter and I said, hey, I'm here for that uh, the refund for those subs. So this kid went over, grabbed an envelope off the stand. It's taped there. Comes over, walks past the guy in the register to give it to me. And the guy turns and says, no. He says, you got to wait for sell. You know, so I'm like, okay, here comes the game plan. So the kid goes and puts it back. So I said, so I send a message to him. I said, well, where are you? No answer. Called him. No answer. So I said, oh, I'm here waiting for you. So, so about, I would say 25 minutes ish, somewhere around there. Cause I'm not going to over exaggerate the story. Uh, he pulls in in his Beamer which I think are, are junk cars because, you know, they're cramped. I mean, my boss had a Beamer just like what he drives, and it was, I felt like I was being stuffed into a freaking potato sack driving those things. I don't know why people like them so much. I think they're an overpriced, expensive piece of crap, but plus repairs are horrendous on them. So anyways, here comes Sal. I said hi to him, and we went inside, and, you know, and uh, so he goes and grabs the envelope and gives it to me. And he has, 
you know, a couple of little smart ass jabs, you know. So what you bring back up with you? You know, my friend of mine is he's a big boy, and it's like, you know, it's like what what I need to bring back up for you? I said, yeah, I should have brought my daughter if I was worried about that. I wouldn't need him, you know. And then he's uh, being a little condescending, you know. You know, go home, make a YouTube video, and, you know, I said, no, actually, I said, I brought him with me because we're going out to eat after this place, you know. We're going to get food after this place. Well, I hope the portions are good, and, I, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, what the freaking hell? So, he tried to throw a little, you know, little shots in there at me, but guess what? You know what's funny, Sal, if you're watching this video? I won, buddy. I got my money. I freaking won. So suck it. How do you like that, huh? What's the matter to you? You don't like it that I won? Yeah. So say what you want, Sal. Don't give a shit. Your subs suck. That's my opinion. And I have the right to say that. So... You know, I got shafted. I got boned on the deal. And I'll tell you, anybody else, don't let stuff like this go. If you get boned on something, go get your money back. You know, he's all pissed off because, uh, you know, I won. And I got my money back. So, say whatever you want. Don't give a shit. So, I sent a message to corporate that he was being a little cocky about it, a little arrogant and condescending. I said... That's not very professional of a of a business owner. You know, you got this little Italian guy going, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, piss off. You know what I mean? It's like, first off, I don't need to bring back up because you're absolutely no threat to me because you don't know me for one. So don't start trying to, you know, say stuff like that, especially when you don't know somebody because you never know what they know. So... Don't don't uh, don't just take a look at the book and think it's nothing. So, anyways, you know you get these freaking people that own restaurants and and then you finally get somebody that challenges them and they get all bent out of shape about it, which I don't really give a shit because you know I got my money back and it's all that mattered. You know I felt I got screwed over. I got a shitty ass sub and. I won! <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this video, Sal, because I know you're watching it. So, whatever. You know, it is what it is. You know, I've had issues at McDonald's, and I've had issues at Burger King, and, you know, we've all had these types of issues. And they all handle them professionally. You know, I've gone back into McDonald's, and, if the, you know, you say, look, I don't want tomatoes. You go back and say, look, man, I didn't want tomatoes on this. Oh, okay, so hang on, we'll, we'll make a new one. All right, cool, thanks a lot, you know? And that's all there is to it. You're dealing with the public. Every person isn't going to be, you know, ah, the sub sucked, fuck it, I mean, I don't, you know, whatever. No, you work for that money. $32 to some people is a lot of money, you know? Some of you guys know that. I mean, that's a full tank of gas in my car. I mean, this, you know, could be groceries for the week. You know, I don't know what you get for thirty-two dollars from cans of soup or something, but I mean, it's something, you know. So, I mean, I don't own a freaking restaurant and sit up on a big golden pedestal thinking I'm king shit, you know, living in a fancy ass house like some of these business owners are, you know. I'm just a normal guy, and these people got to remember that own these stores. You ain't any goddamn better than the customers that come in your freaking store. You know, you take a shit the same way, you take a piss the same way, and you, you're nothing better than anybody else. So, you know, get off your freaking high horse, and you had one unsatisfied customer, and tough shit, it's going to happen. That's the name of the game. You run a freaking business. When I did plumbing and heating with my dad, we ran into the same stuff. But you know something? We made it right, and we were nice about it. And we weren't condescending and talking down to people and throwing little jabs at them, you know? So, you know, it's my opinion if I don't like your sub. Some other people like them. I didn't. So, hey, tough shit. So, anyways, that's that. 
So the Jimmy John saga is over. Hey, puppy. Here's my buddy. Hey, my little buddy. So, yeah. So that's it. You know, you know, the, all of this comes down to is I won. I got my freaking money back, and that's it. So cry about it. I don't care. All the employees were down there were kind of smirking and kind of laughing under their breath because they all knew what was going on. Do you think I give a shit? I had one intention, get my money back. And I got it, and I won. I mean, name calling and shit, I could care less. Doesn't bother me. I don't care, you know? So, I mean, you think I bring my my gigantic friend as a backup? You know? Yeah, okay, yeah. We We didn't need his help, believe me, so... Anyways, you know, people shouldn't be saying dumb shit like that about bringing back up and stuff because they never know if somebody's been in the service. They don't know if they got PTSD and some can set them off and then just start beating the shit out of everybody in your store. I mean, you can't just say that to people. It's stuff you don't say, you know. But so I got under his skin a little bit, I guess. I would assume that the way he acted, but. All right, so there's the update with that. The Jimmy John saga's over. And uh, they have one less customer. I'm not the only one. There's other people out there on YouTube that has the same complaint. So, you know, I'm not adding to it and I'm not taking away from it. You know, this is, this is it and that's it. This is what happened and that was it, so... I don't need to make up or add on or blow stories out of proportion for nobody, you know? Because you guys know I can't freaking lie because I wouldn't remember what the hell I said. <laughs> so there isn't much going on. I guess uh, they shipped my airbags for this. Oh, it's just starting to rain out. Yeah, it's just starting to rain. Damn it. Here we go. Another soggy summer. God, I hope not. So I should be, they've been shipped, so they'll be here, I don't know, however long it takes, a couple days maybe, I don't know. So I'll be doing a video putting the airbags in this car to level it off from all the weight I have in the trunk of all my my machine guns and grenades and shit that I have in there, you know, for my PTSD. But anyways, that's that. I figured I'd give you the update and uh, yeah. Money is going to become worth a lot pretty soon because, I mean, what's going on in the economy now, I mean, I've gone into the dollar store and they had like two two for a dollar cans of soup. Well, that that's gone. That deal's gone now. Now it's one time it was a dollar for a can of soup. Then the next time it was a dollar 95 for a can of soup. I'm like, holy Christ, the prices are doubling and tripling. And it's only going to get worse. So, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of debating on hanging on to that money, not pouring concrete, but I want to get the addition done. So, you know, I had it planned, and that's what I want to get done. But this is still even drying. And this concrete I poured a long time ago. I mean, look, at it. now it's starting to turn white a little bit because you can see how white the other concrete turned. You can see the white spots here where I patched in cracks and stuff. But the piece I poured here is drying but it's damp underneath. So, you know, it's very slowly drying, which is actually a good thing because you want concrete to dry slow, not fast, because it'll crack like a bastard. But, oh, well. So not much going on today. Um, that's it. I just wanted to fill you in on the current events. I'm having one of my delicious peach iced teas from Lipton. I like those. They're really strong, really strong peach flavor. I mean, it's almost to a point of overpowering, but it's okay. Yeah, I can't wait to get going. Look at all the shit I got to install, all this crap. That's going to be fun. That's the fun part, actually. That's the fun part. Pouring the concrete is going to suck. But I want to see if they got a concrete truck that has like a, a pumper built into it with a pumper hose. This way, you could drag the hose out and start from the whole back corner of the garage and work all up the whole side with it instead of wheel bearing, wheel barrowing it. 
Because that's what that's going to be used for. Concrete, take it from here, run down, dump it here, back and forth, back and forth. That's all it's going to be, you know, used for. Then wash it out, make it pretty. But, all right, everybody. That is the end of that. And, uh, well, 15 minutes. That ain't too bad. And, uh, yeah, I got nothing going on today. I'm not going to mess with the inverter. I'm not doing anything today. Oh, how are these batteries doing? Cold, cold, cold. Oh, now see, this one's cold now. Good. So, must be now I have them wired. Like, I wired them according to the RV wiring. And uh, now, must be the, the flow of the solar panels are going in, into these batteries correctly now. Yeah. So, I think that made a huge difference by wiring them around this way. So basically, it's, you know, it's putting the power in at one end and taking it out the other end. So now they're all getting evenly charged now. So oh, they're up to 12.9 volts. So they were at 12.2 because I've been running this all day, just burning off the power. And I had the back lights on in the garage. So I had that back lights on all day today just so it wouldn't throw the power this way and waste it. Instead of just dumping it over here and burning it off and like, well, I'll just run the garage lights. Why not? It's free. Okay. I will catch you guys later. Have a good one.